So the expectations are for the future that the Antarctic continent will warm significantly. It hasn't warmed a lot over most of the continent yet because of the isolation factor. But, um, you know, that's, that isn't going to go on forever. And the expectations for the century, for the rest of the century, is there'll be, you know, significant warming. We're talking two or three degrees at least on the ice itself. We know in the Arctic that sea ice is decreasing rapidly and you know the Northwest Passage has been opened a few times in the last few years. But in the Antarctic, in, in total it's growing. It's, it's decreasing in some places, but in total it's growing. So understanding exactly why that is and understanding when it's going to stop and being able to predict when it'll reverse and go the other way, that's a really important question and we don't really know the answer yet. We have some guesses but that's that's all they are. At the moment one, one interesting thing that's happening in terms of the climate in the Antarctic uh, is that with the, with the westerlies speeding up uh, and the Antarctic circumpolar current, that's the current that flows around the, the oceans around Antarctica, um, that's sped up as well. And the effect of that is that at, at the surface at least, in the ocean surface, that pushes the water away from the pole, from away from the continent. So we've had a flow northwards and that's actually helped to increase the amount of sea ice around Antarctica. Not everywhere, but when you add it up right around the continent, the, the area of sea ice has been increasing for at least 20 years or so uh, around the Antarctic. Now, that obviously can't go on forever because you know the, the ice will get to, to water and air that's too warm to support ice. So it's a really interesting research question at the moment. Um, how, how much longer is this increase in the amount of sea ice going to continue? Because we all know that it can't go on for much longer. Uh, the amount of moisture that you can have in the air is a very very strongly related to temperature and it's very cold in Antarctica so it's actually very dry. Um, it's a desert effectively. It doesn't look like a desert but uh, there's very little rainfall or snowfall. Precipitation is very low in, in the Antarctic. But if you can warm things up that would actually increase the amount of moisture in the air there. So there's the possibility there'll be more snowfall and possibly build up of ice on the continent if things warm up enough. So thinking about the, the bigger picture in terms of climate change for New Zealand, it's, it's pretty clear that the amount of warming we're going to get will be, you know, 70% of the global mean, say, and it's slower than the global average because of all the oceans around us. But I think one of the big unknowns, or one of the big uncertainties for New Zealand is, is that whole question of the westerly winds. Again, for New Zealand it looked as though the westerlies were just increasing into the future, but now it looks like that's still the case in the winter, but actually the opposite's likely to happen in the summer. And this again is to do with how the southern annular mode is, is likely to change in future. So it looks now as though we'll see much more difference between the seasons and how the climate changes over New Zealand. And that's, yeah, pretty intimately tied to what's happening down over the southern oceans and the Antarctic.